Welcome back everybody, my name is Altamar and we are going to be continuing our let's play of Planescape Torment. So, the first thing we're going to do in the northwest quadrant of the hive is we're going to talk to a man named Mar. This man is going to leave us on very many things. Your first impression of Mar is that he needs a long bath, preferably away from any creature that has a sense of smell. You can almost see the stench waft from his body in sinister yellow tendrils. He motions towards you frantically in an effort to get you to come over and talk to him. We're going to approach him and see what he has to say. A look of excitement crosses his face as you approach. Thank you for stopping. My name is Mar, and I have a favor to ask of you. I'm listening. Tis a matter of life and death. I must be delivering this here box, where it'll be my head for sure. Tis me bad luck that I twisted me leg something fierce. So will you help me out by delivering this here box for me? Sure. Mar slowly takes out a small box from within the recesses of his ragged clothing. For the briefest of moments, you see a look of regret across his face, then it is gone. As he looks to you and hands you the box, a slight shimmer surrounds the box as both you and Mar touch it. A sigh of relief is heard as Mar releases the box into your care. What now? This be needing to be delivered to Kutara. He can usually be found somewhere down in the southeastern section of the hive. Oh, unless you try and say I didn't warn you. Whatever happens, don't open the box. And don't leave the hive with the box. Now be off with you. I'll be back when I deliver the box. He 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 and he ran away. So we have been tricked into a box. Well, not really tricked. I already knew exactly what was going to happen. But that's okay. So we're going to go into the flop house next, which is this little building here. Um, there are a couple of people to talk into here, but the really important one... I mean, there's a bunch of generic people to talk to, but the important one is Nestor up here. You see an aging man in soiled and tattered clothes, frantically pacing in the corner. His shock of filthy white hair sticks out in every direction, and his face, encrusted with dirt and streaks of dried blood, is covered in gray stubble. Every few seconds, he stops pacing and flails about suddenly, muttering and cursing, as if assaulted by some unseen foe. He does not seem to notice your approach. Greetings. At the sound of your voice, the old loon whirls about to face you, his wide eyes staring, bulging in their sockets. He regards you for a brief moment, then turns back to his raving. No, 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 it's not you, hoo -hoo, but soon, yes, soon. Uh, who are you talking to? <clears throat> the old man seems oblivious to your presence. Hoo, hoo, hoo. You'll come, yes, you'll come, and old Nestor will be waiting. Waiting? Who are you waiting for? Waiting, yes. He suddenly plops down on the floor as if overcome by exhaustion. Long have I waited, waiting. He takes a deep breath and springs back to his feet. Wait forever if I have to, do you hear me? Are you alright? No! Nestor's face turns beet red and his whole body shakes in protest. My fork! Can't leave without my fork! Hoo hoo! Fork for fork! Your fork! Fork for fork! Can't go home without my fork! Nestor's frenzy reaches a violent crescendo. He begins hopping up and down maniacally, then stops, lowers his head, and runs headlong into a large wooden cupboard that stands against the back wall of the flop house. The force of the impact knocks the old man flat on his back. After a few seconds, he stands back up, a dazed expression on his face. Gone. Stolen. Can't go home without my fork. Stolen, you say? Who took your fork? Nestor stares at you for a long moment, then begins rummaging through the pockets of his filthy tunic. After a few seconds, he produces what appears to be a dismembered ear. Judging by the stench and color of the ear, you wager that the old loon had been toting it around in his pocket for some time. You have my fork, don't you? Don't you? Hoo hoo! He holds the ear close of his speech into it. Bring back my fork. Maybe I can help you. Wait, wait, waiting? Hoo hoo! He shakes the ear violently as he shouts into it. Until you bring it back, then I can go home. Right, I'll try and find your fork. Uh, we can set these actually to all be numbers, which actually is quite helpful. I think I like it more than the life bar total. Oh, that sounds like combat. Hello, thug. It's go time, I guess. All right. Little bits of experience always help. Uh, we're gonna go to find the fork guy, who's actually up here. Uh, there's also one more guy we have to talk to on the way, though. There we go. Porpheon! Every inch of this man's skin is covered in a web of black lines, as if some artist has chosen to accentuate every crease in his flesh with a qu quill pen. The overall effect is such that even when his face shows no expression, he appears to be frowning. I quit the hiccup there in between those two words. I don't have a stutter. <laughs> this one has a name. This one is called Porphyron. The man's voice is like a gong. As he speaks, the lines on his face bend and settle into a series of spherical patterns. This one would know. Why do you address this one? I wanted to ask you some questions about the city. This one would have you know. This one cannot answer your questions. The lines on his face twist into angles, then split into a mass of scribbles. This one has only recently stepped foot in this place of walls. Alright then, uh, but I have to ask you, why do those lines upon your face move? 
The lines show anger. Do you take offense? The lines slowly straighten, forming into gentle curves. No offense was meant. Will you accept the many apologies of this one? No offense taken. Why are you angry? This one tells of an recent, or event recent. Do you know this one was beset by three? Three determined of an item of this one. This one feared an attack. What does this one do? This one surrendered the item. Well, you were right to be afraid. If there were three, then they might have killed you had you not given up the item. This one has been misunderstood. The lines on his face become angled, then smooth, into curves again. This one did not fear being killed. This one feared killing the three. Well, if you could have killed them, why did you let them rob you? This one walks the path of a warrior. Many weapons have walked with this one. The fist, the blade, the stave, the hatchet, the smiter. All these tools are known to this one. That's much, not much of an explanation again. If you're a warrior with that much training, why let them rob you? This one is forbidden to attack. The lines ripple across his face as he speaks. If one had struck the three in anger, the vow of nonviolence would be unmade. A vow of nonviolence? You're a warrior and a pacifist. This one is unfamiliar with your speech. What is a pacifist? Never mind. Why did you train so much if you are not permitted to attack another? This one is of the order of Eret Aja. We wait the final days when we will be called to battle. The training and skills of this one, they are to be kept silent until then. In the meantime, you will let yourself be robbed in the street without defending yourself. This one will clarify. This item is of value. The discipline of the Eret Agaji is of greater value. Since you won't fight, any chance you could talk to these thieves into returning your item? This one addresses with the three thieves. What happens? The requests of this one are met with scorn. The three will not return the item. I'll go see if I can get the item back for you. This one must ask, would you bring violence to the three that have robbed this one? Well, if they aren't smart enough to hand it over, when I ask, things could get ugly. The lines on this man's face form into a series of overlapping ellipses. If that is the message they understand, then that is how the message may be conveyed. Alright then, what's the item you've lost? The item is this, a rope of black and red prayer beads worn around the neck. The worth of these beads is not measured in copper, the worth of these beads is measured, beads is measured in faith. Alright then, I'll see if I can find this necklace. Do you know where the three thugs might be? This one knows where the angry words were traded and the item lost. By the bar that burns inside, the three were outside in, outside the place dressed in black and red. Three robbers dressed in black and red outside the smoldering corpse bar. I'll go find them. Thanks. We'll go do that quest for him, that poor guy. Uh, I don't remember if Malt has anything to say, actually. This man appears less dour and wary of passerbys than the people around him. He moves with an upbeat gait, casually scanning the ground to either side of him as he goes. As you approach him, he nods a friendly greeting. Greetings! Hello, Cutter, say! You seen any debtors about? None nearby, no, I had some questions. Too bad, too bad, he shrugs. Had some questions, did ya? Ask away, then. I'm looking for a man named Farad. The collector boss, don't know much about the man myself. We spent a lot of time fighting his boys, but they've all suddenly disappeared along with Farad. We still catch the occasional straggler in Ragpicker Square, but we've got no idea where the rest are hiding at. I'm also looking for a journal I've lost. Hmm, no, haven't run across one. Tell you what though, if I do, I'll hold on to it for ya. Thanks. That's it, I guess. Don't really need him to tell us about anything. We know what we're doing and we know where we're going. Um, there is someone that's going to rob us up here named Fleece. Or we're gonna get attacked by hive thugs. That's who. I thought there was fleece up here. I could be wrong. Hi. It's been a while. Like a long while since I played this game. Thugs are not worth our magical abilities. I mean, we could chromatic orb one in the face, but. I actually want magic missile. We're level. F we're almost level 5. Magic missile becomes superior to chromatic orb at level 5, I'm pretty sure. We have too much junk in our inventory. We should sell all of the bronze rings. We have so many of them now. We will do that shortly. Fleece, where are you? Am I missing him? No, he's dead. He's supposed to be definitely here. Are you Fleece? There's Fleece. I don't know where he was. You see a man who is looking about the buildings with some confusion. He looks lost and is mumbling to himself. Greetings! The man looks relieved. At last! I beg your indulgence, good sir. I seem to have gotten turned around in this maze of streets. He chuckles uncomfortably. I'm afraid this area of the city is somewhat... He glances around apprehensively. Unknown to me. The residents seem most unwilling to extend an aid to a visitor. Extend aid to a visitor. He looks at you, hopefully. Could I prevail upon you to help me, perchance? Depends on the kind of help you need. I seek the house of my auntie, Marguerite. She is reported to dwell in a house close to the mortuary, but the street layout seems to have changed since my last visit. Do you know the house of which I speak? I'm gonna lie. I do, I can direct you there for a price. Ah, that's fair indeed. To hear last tell, she had her home near the mortuary. His eyes narrow as if studying you. Do you know exactly where the house is? 
Why, she is so the east of the mortuary, near one of the mausoleums. The man shakes his head. Oh, nay, nay, she is not that close, surely. Perhaps you are thinking of somebody else. The man looks about and turns back to you. I shall see if someone else knows. I thank you for your time, good sir. You are about to turn away when suddenly you have a feeling that something is amiss. Suspicious, you glance at the man again, just in time to see him withdrawing his hand from your purse. You can't be sure, but you think he might have taken something from you. I'm going to bait the man to pickpocketing and serve the technique. We get 1,200 experience for doing that. You engage the man in a light conversation and secretly study his movements. The man seems to rely on two things, pretending to be a high-class citizen out of his element to lower the target's guard, and distracting the target by having the victim point out directions. When the victim turns to point at a street or landmark, the man skims the mark's purse and tucks it inside of his conveniently long sleeves. You make a mental note of his er, technique just as he makes another grab for your purse. Hey, what do you think you're doing? The man jumps in surprise and starts running. All right, then. Uh, I guess we can kill him. Why not? We'll get our money back. Or something back. Five coins and a rat tail. Um, if you have a high enough dexterity, by which I mean a dexterity above 13, which ours is not, you can stop him from stealing from you, and then you can actually take all of his money. Which is much more amusing, actually. So we have a few quests to go and do now. Why am I locked onto my carry? Whatever. Doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to go first to the southeast portion of the hive. And we are going to give the box to the next person. That is not going to be the last person for the box quest though, just as a heads up. There are several different places you have to take the box before that quest gets completed. Mm -hmm. We need to go to Kutara's warehouse. Kutara, where are you? I don't remember where he is in here. Are you Kutara? Yes, it's good. Moving from box to box, this man seems to be totally immersed in counting boxes and scribbling the results down on a piece of parchment. He looks annoyed as you interrupt him. What is it now? Can't you see I'm busy taking inventory? Go bother someone else. I was told to deliver this box to you. Well, then why didn't you say so in the first place? Let's see what you got for me. I'm sure it'll need to be inventoried. Mara told me to give this to you. As you hold the box out for him to take, Kutara's expression turns from one of interest to that of intense horror. No, please, get it away from me. I don't understand. Why are you afraid of this box? I said, I said, get back. Death, evil. Had to dupe Mara. Couldn't take it anymore. Please, take it to Braskin. Live Southwest Hive. Take me. No. Apparently, the set of the box is just too much for him as he runs screaming from the building. Wait, what am I supposed to do with the box? But the um, box, it's not my box. Alright, well, we're going to the southwest now. Time to go hand this off to somebody else. Uh, we need to go to uh, Breskin's Kip. Now we need to try to give him the box. Alright, Braskin, what up, dude? What? You again? Unless you have some business with me, I suggest you leave my house immediately. I was told to deliver this box into your care. Well, why didn't you say so? Just hand it over and you can be on your way. As you present the box to Braskin, his expression changes from one of anticipation to that of amusement. Whoa there! I won't fall through that sick er, trick a second time. Put that thing away and leave. I don't understand. Why won't anyone take this box? First Kutara, and now you? Did you say Kutaria? Braskin lets out a great bellow of laughter. Why, that's the fellow who bought the box off me. Thought he got the best of me when I bought it. I guess he figured out the gem alone was worth more than the price he'd paid for me. Poor fellow didn't realize what he'd gotten himself into until it was too late. Just what's so horrible about this box? You mean, you really don't know anything about the box you're holding? Well, I guess it won't hurt to tell you what I know. First off, so you don't get any ideas in your head, the curse on that box only affects the current owner of the box, and had to be the owner. And to be the owner of the box, you have to take it willingly. There goes the idea of just leaving the box for someone else to find. So what's in the box? What's in the box? No, that's a good question. That box has been around the hive since anyone can remember. There are many rumors flying about, as you can imagine. Over time, this truth has been warped a little bit further with each retelling of the story. Go on. I've heard many a story about that box, and they all seem to have a reoccurring theme. That box given to the that fellow thing is Morador's box, and the owner of the box should die should he or anyone else open it. As to the contents, who knows? Some say it's an ancient dragon, while others say it's the evil soul of Morador himself. I cannot tell you for sure, but just by looking at it, any soul can tell something evil. It's something evil, and one would have to be a fool to open it. What am I supposed to do with it? I would suggest you go see Shalandra. She lives in the northeastern region of the Hive. It was from her that I won the box. Who knows? Maybe she'll have more knowledge of what to do with it, 
or you can find some other clueless bird to take it off your hands. It's up to you. I wish you luck. Updated my journal. And we're off yet again to the northeast portion of the hive. Get out the door and stop bottlenecking each other. As you can see, nobody wants our box. I actually don't remember how this one ends. I just kind of remember... I think we have to go to the alley, which is good because that'll be our next area. Where's Shalander's place? Uh, I don't remember where Shalander is. Um, we'll wander around and see if we can find her. That is the one thing I don't remember, where Shalandra is. Shalandra? You are not a Shalandra. I'm looking for a Shalandra. What is this? Shalandra's kip. What am I doing? It's right there. I'm just an idiot. Shalandra, what up? And yet another interruption. A person cannot even find privacy within one's own home. Please leave before I summon the guards, or better yet, I'll try a new spell I've been toying with. I wish to learn more about this box. You hold out Morador's box for Shalandra to examine. Ah, yes, I remember this box well. I acquired it some time ago. What do you wish to know about it? You seem to know something about magic. Can you tell me what spells have been put on this box? For many years, I studied the box and tried to learn its secrets. Spell upon spell has been woven into it. To my amazement, my studies revealed that all of the spells of this type are used to confine fiends. You mean there are fiends trapped in this box? No, nay. No, sorry, no, not fiends. A fiend. And judging by the sophistication and power of these spells, it would have to be one of significant standing and power in its realm. I have more questions. Can you safely remove the spells on this box? Speaking to remove... You're seeking to remove yourself. I can talk. Seeking to remove yourself from this box, eh? That spell is the worst of them all. Basically, that particular spell draws energy from the current owner of the box and uses it to power one of the spells of confinement. This isn't the worst of it. The fiend inside can smell this energy and would more than likely track down that person should it escape. It's really a no-win situation to open that box or to own that box. Either it drains you dry of all your energy, or the fiend within kills you. I see. Want to have more questions? Where did you get this from? Hmm, let me think. I don't recall whom I got it from. I just remember I was down in the marketplace looking for some spell components when some person offered me this box. After testing the box, I found it to be cursed, but I was intrigued by the spells woven into the box, and so I purchased it anyway. If you were so intrigued by the box, what made you decide to give it away? I was young and brash back then. In my relentless pursuit of knowledge, I carelessly undid one of the spells. Look closely at the box. It was like new when I had it. The signs of decay are an indication that the spells are weakening. I realized I was in danger if I kept the box any longer, so I held a contest to get rid of it. A contest. It was the most expedient way to rid myself of it. I simply invited all the bashers in the hive to fight each other to determine who was the best. Bashers are notorious for having big muscles and not much upstairs, if you know what I mean. They came like flies to honey. I offered some money and a box as a prize. I believe some basher named Braskin won the contest. Do you know the history behind this box? The only thing I would have been able to learn is its name. It's called Morador's Box. As to who Morador is, or the origins of the box, I do not know. It's not Morador, it's Mordor, and it's a place in a different universe. I have more questions I wish to ask. Is there a way to safely dispose of Morador's Box without hurting anybody? I am not strong enough to fight or banish such a creature. It's been ages since I've been there, but there was a cathedral located in the middle of the Alley of Dangerous Angel Angles. Sorry, a priest or someone who gains their power from a higher source might be able to help you. Updated my journal, right? Okay, so we're actually going to end the video. You know what? We're only at 18 minutes. We could totally do. Damn it! I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fight time. I know. Let's go. All my fighters and my main character can beat this dude to death. Alright, what do we got for loot? More bronze rings. Just all the bronze rings and copper earrings in the world, apparently. Um, we're going down to the alleys. The alley's entrance is down here, I think. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a break, quick break between this video and the Alley of Dangerous Angles. So we will be going to do that in the next video. Like always, if you guys have any suggestions... Actually, before we end, do we have any other quests to turn in? We need to find Soigo. We can't do that for a while. We can't do the curse for a while. We can't do the mausoleum. We could do the mausoleum in this video, actually. Let's do that. 
Let's not leave this at 17 minutes or whatever, 19 minutes. Let's do the mausoleum. It's a pretty cool place. Alrighty, here we go. When we get close, a portal will open, and we are going in. A guardian spirit will come talk to us. This spectral figure materializes from the gloom of the passageway ahead, and quickly moves to block your path. It floats before you, its once human features twisted in a mask of rage. Defilers, leave this place at once. Greetings. Leave now, its booming voice echoes down the hall. This place is forbidden to the living. Leave while you still can. I have some questions first. Seek your answers elsewhere. This place is a sanctuary for the dead. I will not permit their slumber to be stirred by the intrusion of yet another insolent mortal. Another? Has someone else been here? If you must know, yes, there is an intruder who even now continues to violate the sanctity of these hollowed halls. The anger in the spirit's voice fades. He seems somewhat saddened by the admission. The souls of my brothers and sisters cry out for peace. Why don't you drive, it drive the intruder away? I cannot. The coward seals himself within the inner chamber of the mausoleum. He has erected powerful wards that bar my entrance to the chamber. It is from there that he calls upon his dark arts to awaken my brethren and bends them to his evil will. Perhaps I can be an assistance to you. The spirit remains silent for several long moments. You can almost feel the weight of the lifeless gaze upon you. Yes, you may prevail where I have failed. If you will pledge to rid me of this blackguard, or blaggard, sorry. Although it is spelled blackguard, it's pronounced blaggard, just a heads up. I will grant you passage. What say you? I'll do it. So be it. The spirit begins to fade, but only until the echoing of his distant body, his voice remains. But take heed, tread lightly in these halls, lest you join the others in eternal rest. He does have a good point. There are lots, and I mean lots, of undead in this place. But we're going to go exploring anyways, because exploring is the best luring to do. Ow. There are also traps. Ah, for skeletons. That was awesome. I did see that. That was a good hit. Oh, come on, guys. So we're gonna cut our way through some skeletons. There are some things to loot around this area. Like that. Come on. There we go. What do we get? A silver ring this time that I still can't carry because I'm full up on more copper and bronze rings again. Huh? Let's go up here. All right. Done. Grab a quick save. This is not where we want to go, so we're not going to go in there yet. I'm gone. Or possibly at all. Stop shooting me with chromatic orbs. Let's go south. All right. We're going to explore this whole place. I don't quite remember where we're actually supposed to go, but oh, that's a giant skeleton. Done. All right, done. Did you see that? Damn it. Giant skeletons are a great experience, but they're pretty hard to kill. They have lots of hit points anyways. 175 experience though for that bad boy. Totally worth fighting it. Now, there's more loot here, but there are of course more skeletons here. I'm gone. We'll let my fighters handle this. Maybe I'll do a chromatic orb. Just because I haven't done a spell for a while. I did nothing because skeletons are immune to acid. Good job. And we'll just kill them all off. And we'll get our loot, which is a heart charm. Not bad. Uh, nothing there. All right. This is pretty much one of the only like big fight. Oh, there's a couple of big fight areas in the game, but most of the game can be handled without fighting. All right. All right. We are going to. Of course, explore this hole. Oh, skeletons popped out of the walls. Good experience, anyways. Done. Loot! Some monies! 
And a lot of skeletons here. And more eluding things. You should not be the forefront of the fight. Actually, you know what? You can be the forefront of the fight. Um, we could cast armor, but I'm actually going to save it for now. And we'll just let our group fight this out. What's in here? Clot charms, always good. Bandages, also always good. And rags, not super good, but useful sometimes. Done. All right. As you can see, we stopped getting hit with chromatic orbs. We have now returned to the beginning. And we're going to wherever the hostile creatures. Oh, there's some skeletons down here. I see. There's actually several of them. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, you're not a forefront person. Then no more. Don't go flying away. You're the only one with a blunt weapon that's pretty good at killing skeletons. Alright. Dacon, what are you doing? Get down here. Now we're gonna go this way. I'm gone. We're nearly done with the mausoleum. It's not a super long area. Alright. Although the lower level does have some talking to do. Alright. Anything in here? Oh, yep, yeah, that's a big skeleton. Right. No, you are not capable of standing in melee combat with a giant skeleton. Oh good. Oh, he's stuck. I'm gone. All right. I'm gone. There we go. More is a beast. Did you see that? You're seeing him from like eight every time. That was awesome. More is a gone. beast mode warrior. Skull. Murmur. And last little bit to do, and then we're gonna go downstairs. And we're going to end this place first up before we fight you guys. Right. Die. Mort, no! Get back here. Oh, I see. The skeleton's actually standing on the uh, pathway. Die. Look how Dakin's just sprinting around the entire way. I'm actually okay with that doesn't really matter because we are going to here Done. we are going to quick save though before going in of course you see a mid-sized man in long robes of deep black his hair is neatly coiffed and an impeccably trimmed goatee compliments his handsome features, you know he's evil because of the goatee. Noticing your arrival, he puts down the book he was writing in and strides confidently over to you. Impressive, I must admit. I never thought you would make it this far. I'm glad to have disappointed you. Are you the one responsible for the walking dead? Who I am is of no consequence to you. What I want is the question that should concern you most. As he speaks, he looks you up and down, as if somehow fascinated by you. Very well, what do you want? He takes a step back and cocks an eyebrow. I want your blood. What a coincidence! I've come for your blood as well. Prepare to die. Really? Well, by all means, give it your best effort. He smiles smugly and raises his hands before him. Slowly, they flit back and forth, tracing in intricate patterns, tracing intricate patterns in the air. All right, so we have a mage that we need to kill. Dakon, you're going in. Actually, I'm going to move back, and I'm going to cast armor on myself. Alright. Dacon should be pretty capable of handling the mage. Although he has some cool looking spells, that's for sure. I'm actually going to send Mort down to help.
I am pretty hurt. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over here, we're gonna grab a clutch arm and use that. That gives us some hit points back. And the mage dies. I think I might need another clutch arm. There we go. Alright, we're feeling pretty good now. Let's see what he's got for loot. So, uh, of course, a bronze ring, as if we didn't have enough of those already. A bracelet, which can be worn only by mages, and apparently acts as armor, like full armor, like scale armor. So now we have four armor class, which is pretty impressive. And a scroll of ice knife, which we're going to copy into our book, which gives us our first level two spell, actually. So if we go to our level 2 spells, we're going to grab... Oh, there's a blood bridge, but I don't want to use that. Blood brewer, ice knife. I'm just going to grab a shield. I'm going to get rid of the chromatic orbs. I am going to replace them with magic missiles shortly. But we are officially done here. There's also should be some loot to grab here. So strength, chromatic... Full on inventory again. What does that ring do? Oh, it's a silver ring. Okay. Um, clot charms can all go there, bandages can all not go there. Because we are out of room, apparently. Too many things in our inventory, that's okay though. Knife can go there, although we like the green steel knife better. We'll grab the dagger, the journal, and the uh, chromatic orb spell. We're going to copy strength. We'll sell chromatic orb because we already have it. Um, we already have these, right? Yeah, okay, good. Dagger is 1 to 6 plus 1, so it's a bone dagger. It's actually really nice. It's better than the one we are currently using, so that's our new weapon. Uh, it does that go plus 1, it has plus 1 piercing damage, so it is a plus 1 enchanted dagger, which is pretty sweet. Now, the journal is kind of long, so we'll go through it. This leather band tome is cracked and worn with age. Some sort of crest has been burned into the cover. You can make out a series of interlocking triangles sent around the initials SR. The writing upon its pages has faded considerably, but the last few entries seem to have been penned recently. Day 2 of the 127th year of Fractal Hashkashir's... Hashkar's reign, sorry. At last I have found it. The missing page of the Eptarj Grimoire is now in my possession. As I had guessed, the page detailed the necessary components for the casting of the final transformation spell. I have all but one of the components. A drop of an immortal's blood is all that sends me between me and eternal power of lichdom. But where can I find such a rarity? Perhaps you should seek the answer through divination. After days of taxing divination spells, I finally have my answers. The divination revealed the location of an immortal, located to be somewhere within the ancient mausoleum in the hive section of Sigil. I must make haste. I must be. I must find this creature and draw its blood before it moves on. I have arrived at the mausoleum. Immediately, I was set upon by a shade that guards the remains of those interred within the place. I managed to elude the spirit and found my way into what appears to have been some sort of inner sanctum. Protected by some minor wards to prevent any further interruptions by my s that supernatural twit, I have set about raising some of the locals to conduct a search for the immortal. If the divination was accurate and the immortal is here, then it likely is interred within one of the many crypts that line these halls. It is only a matter of time now. I am not alone. Someone has entered the mausoleum and is interfering with my servants. Could this be the one I seek? The divination revealed only that I would find the immortal here. Could it be that my presence in this place has prompted that which I seek to seek me out? What a delightful twist! I shall have to... The ink on this last entry is still wet. So he was writing that even as I came into the room. And that's all we have to do here. So we're done the mausoleum, we're gonna go hand it in, and then we'll uh, do the... Oh, we just to the ghost, right? As you step into the corridor, the guardian spirit materializes before you. Its ghostly countenance regards you benevolently. I thank you. You have done me a great service. The spirits of my charges sleep soundly once more. Go in peace, my friend. The apparition fades away, leaving you alone in the deserted halls of the mausoleum. Updated my journal. 2,000 experiences, which is pretty good. And now we have a long, long run out of this place. We've already explored it, except for... I guess we didn't really explore this part. Done. I don't remember where it goes, though. So, we'll take a quick look. Where do you go? Oh, right, it shoots us out over here. You can just jump through the area. I remember now. 
Time to leave and go talk to uh, right, Naruj about the mausoleum. Also, I need more water. I am dying. All right. Why are you guys not moving? Are you stuck? Done. Oh, they can't get past the tiny. I'm oh, gone. hey, there's something to loot here. I'm gone. They won't go through dark patches. I'm gone. So they actually got stuck. That was interesting. Now they'll be fine, though. Or should be anyways. I guess we could go deal with the thugs that have um, Porphyron's necklace as well. Couldn't hurt, I guess. Done. I mean, it's a really quick quest. I'm gone. Done. I don't like it when I can't see where my character... For some I'm reason, gone. doesn't show where they're going. That's fine, whatever. I don't need the little symbol. Naroj. You see Naroj. He's pulling at one of the spikes of hair and using it to scratch a spot on his face. You can't help but think he'd look a lot better with dreadlocks. I found out what was going on in the mausoleum. The dead sleep again. Naroj's lines of worry smooth out as you speak. Give thanks, I. And he gave us 200 copper coins again. Goodbye, Naroj. All right. Now, we are out of here. The people that we need to go kill for Porphyron is down here. It's these guys. Swords. Yeah, I think it might be these guys. Do you see a heavy set man looking or heavy set looking man? He has a sour expression. Greetings. The man looks at you. For a moment, grunts and raises his hand, revealing a wicked dagger. He smiles evilly and begins twirling it in a menacing arc. We accidentally just got in fight for no reason. Oh crap, I almost died. Time to move. I'm gone. Just about dead. Need to I'm drink gone. a... And by drink I mean just not use that. Use that. There we go. I guess we could use bandages too, but clot potions give us resistances as well. And also, we got another one back anyways, so that's always good. It's not that guy. I think it's over... Where is it? Is it these guys? You're not wearing black. Where's that one dude? I know I saw him before. I know he's around here somewhere. I've seen him like a dozen times. It's not you guys either. Maybe he's around the side over here. We'll find him. We're gonna find and kill him. Actually, we'll just kill all the thugs. You know what? I think it might be these guys. I just don't remember. Black and red. Yeah, okay. Greetings. And how can I help you, Governor? This man breaks into a sneer. Looks time. Looks to me I need a healer. You one of the ones who robbed a monk in the hive, took his prayer bead necklace, some sod with lines scrawled all over his face, claimed he could have put us all in the dead book, yet lets us rob him blind. The man gives a slow to the smile. Never heard of a sod, I haven't. Maybe you better give me the necklace back before I put all you all in the dead book. I'd be watching where you're letting those threats fly, governor. You let another one slip your tongue, I'll give you a second smile, Jig. If you think you can, take me on, come on. Alright fighters, go deal with my problem for me. I may have caused a kerfuffle, but it's your job to fix it. Alright, easy fight. Let's grab the per- oh, it's a ba he has a battle axe, nice. Too bad we can't use it, but I mean, it's still pretty cool. We'll probably sell it. We'll get more to loot. Between this video and the next video, before we go in the uh, Alley of Dangerous Angles, I will go to the store and sell a whole ton of junk. So that way we don't have to worry about it anymore. Actually, July is here. We should probably talk to him. Did I talk to him yet? You see a thin man with stained clothes, a hook nose, and two stubby horns jutting from his forehead. He is stumbling about and muttering to himself. He stinks of brine, vomit, and cheap wine. Greetings. He's not the person. There is a quest to see July. I just can't remember where we get it. I will find it though. I just can't remember. We do have to go meet July about something. If I could remember what, that would probably be more useful, but I just don't for the life of me. 
remember what it was. Let's go. Damn it. I'll never catch a break. Yet more thugs to kill. Yay, just straight up copper. That's always useful. Eventually here we're gonna go get some tattoos, but that's not for a little bit just yet. Now, I don't need to talk to one year. Do I need to talk to I do need to talk to one year. That's one thing we didn't do last time. This is the guy that stole that fork. You see a shady fellow standing before you, picking his teeth with what appears to be a tiny metal fork. His chest is covered by patchwork armor, adorned with large spikes, and a long knife hangs at his side. You notice he's missing his right ear. Greetings. Call. He regards you coolly from the shadows as if siding you up. I said, greetings. What's the matter? Your other ear not working? The one ear tiefling scowls at you, threatening. Pike off, Burke, or I'll have your guts for garters. How'd you lose that ear? What did you just say? His right hand dressed to the hilt of his knife. Just curious. No, I think you lost it while robbing an old man here in the hive. I don't know what you're talking about, Burke. He glares at you angrily. Now I suggest you get your mangled carcass out of my sight before I carve my name into you. Certainly, just give me the fork you stole from him and I'll be on my way. With a flash of movement too quick to follow, he whips his knife from his sheath and begins waving it menacingly before you. Why don't you come and take it from me, Burke? That's the way you want to play it. Fair enough. No. Come on, fighters. Do damage. Pull aggro. If only you had taunt. Alright. Okay. We'll solve a couple problems. My quality stiletto now. Now we are officially full up on junk. There we go. Now this stiletto, is it any good? 1 to 4 damage, not particularly good. Let's go give this thing back to Porphyron. This one addresses you, Porphyron. As you speak, the angles in Porphyron's face relax into a series of strange curves. This one would ask, do you have the neck rope of the bees that was stolen? I think so. Is this it? The one sees what you hold. Those are beads one's missing. He takes them from you. You notice his hands have the same tracery of lines upon them as his face. This one has a question. How did you get the beads from the three? I killed them. I took the beads. This one is content. The message of violence has been conveyed. This one bestows several welcome thanks. Yes, the pleasure is mine. I have a question for you, though. If you cannot enter combat, how did you get your warrior's training? This one clarifies the Eritagogi. May train with one when there's no anger between them. I see. Could you teach me how to use those weapons? This one could instruct you, yes, but this one warns you. With knowledge of violence comes the temptation to use it. I sure hope so. This one speaks. Is your will to leave behind your previous profession? The path of the warrior cannot be walked with an unfocused mind. Nope. We can become a warrior again if we talk to him. But, uh... We're pretty happy with being a mage right now, and we're gonna keep that that way. Because we have high intelligence and we have shitty strength. Well, we have average strength, but whatever. The old man stops his frantic pacing and glances at you nervously. Fork, fork, fork! Can't go home without my fork. Is this the fork you speak of? Mr. Hastily snatches up the fork. My fork! My fork, fork, fork! Fork, ho ho! He hops up and down excitedly, waving the fork back and forth in an elaborate pattern above his head, as if he were performing some sort of ritual. Now I can go home. Farewell, hoo hoo, farewell, Nestor. Nestor turns to leave. As if struck with some afterthought, he turns back around and hands you a scrap of something soft and rubbery, the severed ear. Upon closer examination, you notice that there's an earring dangling from it. Pop, get the earring and discard the rotting flesh. Sounds like a good plan to me. Nestor just went through a portal, actually. Hello, before we leave, let's just see what there is for loot. Nothing. All right. All right. So I think that's going to be it for this video. Let's take a quick look at the earring we got, which is in somebody's inventory, I'm sure. Was it just a copper earring? Oh, go away, thugs. Are you serious? I've killed like 7,000 thugs. And yet, they still keep coming. Okay, we definitely have the earring in our inventory, but where? Maybe just a copper earring, I guess. Oh no, one ear is earring, there we go. Plus 10 to stealth skill bonus, wearable only by thieves. Not super important. Uh, I guess we can loot. Really? He respawned as we went outside? Hmm. 
not super happy about that. It's just kind of it's it's not even it's just annoying. It's not like a it's not even that time consuming. Just slightly irritating. And between this video and the next video, I'm gonna go sell some of the stuff. I'm not gonna buy anything. I will be sure to be recording if I buy anything neat for those of you who are actually watching. Just sell the junk that you don't want to keep. Um, things to keep or things that are important to keep. Keep scrap or keep rags sorry um keep claw charms of course those are always useful keeps junk you find junk is always important too uh keep the hammer and the iron pry bar and the scalpel and other than that you can pretty much sell the rest of it not a lot else to do daggers and stuff like I, almost all the weapons and all of the like the bronze rings and copper earrings aren't important you can sell all that for copper so like always, if you guys have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video.